NAD, it's a supplement that so many people are now trying to take intravenously within their yeah. taking it as an IV drip. One, I wanted to ask your thoughts on that as a medical doctor, or people are taking it in supplement forms, which is less absorbable, but we can kind of like get into that in the beginning. First of all, like, can you explain what NAD is for people that are listening that don't know what it is? And what are your thoughts on kind of the hype around it at the moment? Yeah, so I looked into NAD when I had someone on the podcast a few years talking about it. And it was still quite new to me then. And honestly, it's still quite new to me now. But from what I've seen, I'm not convinced that it's a good uh, spend of your time or your money because these drips do take a while as well to like um, to to take. So what is NAD? So NAD is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. That's it. Okay, or or abbreviated as NAD plus. Yes. Um, and it's really interesting as a molecule because it is a cofactor in the energy generation within the cell or the mitochondria. So it 100 has a role. And the interest in the longevity space is the amounts of this molecule appear to decline over time. As we age. Which is why a lot of people are taking versions of NAD or the precursor called NMN, N, yeah. uh, which is the mono, or not, not the dinucleotide, but the mononucleotide of that in an attempt to reasonably increase NAD in the cell. The issue is, whilst we might have seen some of these effects in rodent models and in animal models, there's real lacking human trial evidence. And for anyone that knows anything about pharmaceutical drug trials, just because you've seen it in an animal model does not mean that it's going to be the same in the human. In fact, the vast majority of drugs have been completely pulled or not even made it to you know pass the first phase of human trials because they just didn't work. So that's the first thing I think people need to wrap their head around. When you see an animal study or you see someone promoting it based on an animal study, red flag straight away it should just be that's interesting it's cool like i i love like some of these animal based studies but it does not translate into an evidence based action to take in the human world so when you look at the issues around nad boosters or nmn um a like you alluded to there's the form factor so supplements oral intake tends to be completely digested and and there's nothing that goes into your bloodstream so people had the smart idea of okay well let's uh let's do an iv drip iv drip sort of bypasses that metabolism and that that metabolic pathway but again there's no evidence that it actually gets into the place where you want it in the cell and in fact we don't actually know a lot about that conduit between the mitochondria so these these organelles in your cell and the cytoplasm, which is the space around the cell, um, we actually don't know a lot about that relationship as in of itself. So the fact that people can say, oh, okay, well, we're going to take this and it's going to somehow get from your bloodstream into your mitochondria and it's going to have this magnificent benefit on longevity, I think is a real, real far stretch today. I'm happy to have my mind changed when some human trial Same. evidence comes, but I have not seen anything remotely close to the hype that has been generated around this to qualify for me taking time out of my day to sit and have an IV drip for an hour or two hours, where actually, if you want the best bang for your buck, if you're interested in mitochondrial health, which people should be, go and do exercise, do a hit train, do a zone two training, do anything that increases mitochondrial biogenesis that we can actually measure from, from biopsies and stuff. That's where I put my money. Do maybe some cold exposure if you want as well. Maybe there's some benefits of that. I'm much more convinced of that evidence than I am for the NMN supplementation evidence. The other things I would say, which again, doesn't get talked about enough, I would invest in therapy. Like if I had the like choice between spending a hundred pounds or 200 pounds on an iv supplement a couple of times a week. we don't know what the dosing is either no, like that's I the know, thing like, talk about that yeah, that, yeah. Like, the, like i've got no idea how much we should be taking whether it should be a daily thing whether it's a weekly thing i've got no idea um so 
I would I would rather spend my money having two sessions of therapy every single month. Like yeah. I think it's going to have a much better impact on longevity or health span than any of these supplements. So I'm really really bearish on NAD boosters in total, as you can probably tell, but happy to be convinced uh, otherwise. Yeah, it's interesting. So I was just bringing up what I had written about and I, I said exactly the same thing. And, and that's why I started writing about this because I was on that panel, but also I'd had an NAD drip because I always find it interesting. I want to go and trial things. And I actually had it taken out of me because it made my heart, because obviously it's energy, right? Yeah. So it, you do feel quite flustered. That's one of the side effects. But my heart, it was interesting. You were talking about 200 beats a minute. I don't yeah. know what mine was. <laughs> yeah. Probably wasn't anywhere near that. But I was I was getting really like flustered, hot, overwhelmed. My heart was going really, really fast. I thought I was going to pass out. And I was like, this needs to come out of me. This yeah, is, this yeah. is, This does not feel like this is doing what it, that's good for me. And I wanted to read a bit more into it. And, you know, I, I wanted to look at the, at the clinical trials after that because I was thinking, well, what have I just done to my body? And they were short. They are, they're not long-term trials. I think that's also what we've got to think about, right? These are short trials yeah. that have been done. Then they don't have meaningful clinical outcomes yet. And I think a lot of these places are from quite luxurious places that are giving, giving these treatments out with people that can spend that money. And when we're thinking about it, like I was actually going, well, what's the, what's the risks versus the benefits? And the theoretical concern is that yes, NAD supports cell growth, um, DNA repair, like those things we do know, but some researchers are exploring whether excessive NAD, hence why dosage is really important, IV drips, you're getting an excessive amount in an IV drip, right? Could even fuel cancer cell proliferation. Like, and I think about this in synergy with nutrients. I'm not saying that this is what all IV drips do that give nutrients. And there's sometimes when people are very deficient in certain things, they do need it medically. But I'm talking about like not medically, right? I'm talking about people going into clinics and just asking for certain drips to get these huge infusions. For me, when I was taught in biochemistry and nutritional science, it was all about nutrients and vitamins and minerals that all work together in something called synergy. You know, they all kind of are cofactors of one another. And when you swamp your body with one huge thing and none of the others, you're automatically going to be putting them out of balance. Yeah. And I don't think we think about it with yeah. these things. And so when I'm looking at, you know, if someone's deficient, then of course we need to be topping them up because they're deficient. They don't have enough in their body. But right now this is so early. They're like, are we testing for how much is in their body? Are we testing it versus what the dosages are? And so, you know, when I kind of see that it could be, you know, linked to cancer cell proliferation, my ears tweak up a bit. Yeah. And so I do think it's an important topic to like bring up. And also when I was looking at it, I was like, well, you know, where does it come in food? And it is like, if we look at the ways that we can support it through diet, and I, I put it through here, we can look at it through like, Green vegetables, fish, mushrooms, edamame, all of these can help as the precursors to, yeah. NA, to NAD. So again, like again, focusing again on the things that we know aren't going to be detrimental, I think are really, really key. I, I think it's a really important point you made about dose because we know from the large trials looking at multivitamins or high dose vitamins, and even you know vitamins that you just buy off the shelf from your local health food store, when taken at an excessive dose consistently for the wrong person who might have precancerous lesions, completely unbeknownst to, to that individual. I mean, we not to scare everyone, but you know, we have cancer cells around our body circulating every second of every day. And our immune system is just like a targeted SWAT team going around our body and like removing any malfunctioning dysfunctional cells. If we start giving molecules that could be amping up the defenses it's almost like arming a bunch of terrorists in our body and, and it's a bit of a stark analogy there but like it's not what you want to be doing and as a one-off like probably not gonna do any harm no. i don't think you've got to worry about it but if this is something that you do like all the time yeah once a month or a couple of times a week i mean the honest answer is i have no idea i mean it, well, i don't think anyone does i don't think anyone could sit there and give a, a full explanation that they know exactly what's going to happen totally, to do it every single 100%. week because the research isn't there yet well, exactly yeah and i think these packages that are being sold i hope they've got a lot of insurance because if a year down the line someone suddenly 
has a, a, a cancer lesion that's found on a, on a screening and you do a history and you're like, what have you been doing for the last like couple of years? I'm like, oh, well, I exercise, I look after my diet and I've been doing these NAD plus IV drips. drips. Uh, I'd be, I, w- I would be very uh, fearful to be the individual that is selling those because I mean, they're unlicensed and I think there is a, I think someone's trying to make it a pharmaceutical product in the, in the U S whether or not that is coming from a commercial perspective or whether it's because they generally think it should be a pharmaceutical product. I'm not too sure, but the research today, I would say it's probably a not a good spend of your money and B yeah, complete unknown. Yeah. Complete unknown.